do you worry about protectionism? Do you worry about some of the noise coming out of the United States of America? Well, I think to answer the broad question, of course, we, we always are concerned with protectionism. We realize that in order for Canadians, in our example, or for citizens around the world to want to see the benefits of trade, they have to see them come to themselves personally. So, so we worry about that. And that actually is a big part of our agenda, thinking about how we can help middle class Canadians to be successful mm -hmm. so they can actually see the benefits of trade. Is Canada already suffering from the uncertainty of NAFTA? We, 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 uh can't quite figure out whether President Trump will tear it up apart or not. Our economy in Canada is doing really well. So uh, what I can say is that, you know, fastest growing country in the G7 over the last year, the lowest unemployment rate in 40 years. Uh, so things are going well. Of course, there are going to be businesses who are being cautious because of the NAFTA negotiations. But our view is that we should be working diligently to get to a better NAFTA, to find ways to improve it. Uh, improve, really, from our perspective, on what is a, a deal that works, that works yeah. to the benefit of Canadians, to the benefit of Americans, to the benefit of Mexicans. So that's, that's our approach. How much of an impact will the tariffs on solar panel affect Canada? Well, it's a pretty new issue, uh, so I, I can't tell you that we've uh, crunched the numbers to give you an exact number. But of course, every tariff in our estimation is uh, potentially negative. So we will continue to look for ways to to come to agreements that that reduce tariffs, uh, tariffs, and and. A big part of that is to make sure that Canadians see the benefits. So, so we can't do those two things in isolation. We have to be thinking about, you know, how do we make sure that families can see opportunities for their children, and that's the thing that's going to give them the confidence to say, yes, we can part, we can be part of the global trading system. That's our approach. Um, Minister, going back to NAFTA, if you look at negotiations, what is the percentage that actually NAFTA gets ripped apart, or that it's renegotiated to a point that President Trump says, yeah, sure, we're still in. Well, our, our plan A is that we're going to improve NAFTA. And I think the way we get to that as being the, the outcome that should be the expected outcome is we say, you know, NAFTA provides 9 million jobs in the United States. It's obviously been very positive for Mexico. It's, it's very positive in Canada. Our supply chains are very interrelated. So, so the current agreement is working. I think what we all recognize is that it was done 24 years ago. So there's places we can improve. We can improve by looking at the digital economy. We can improve by looking at you know, how labor in certain sectors uh, works between the countries. There's, there's opportunities there. That's the approach that we'll take. And uh, you know, we're we're, we're constantly optimistic, but we realize there's there's hard work. Negotiations are tough. There's things that uh, we need to work through. Now, do you have to also propose or overhaul, uh, you know, the tax plan to almost contend with the U.S. after what they did in December? Well, the American tax plan is is a big change, uh, but it's not one that uh, that is that different in terms of where the eventual rates are versus the Canadian situation. So average corporate rates, for example, in Canada are about 27 percent. The way we look at it is this will bring average rates in the United States to about 26 percent, uh, but it'll have different impacts on different sectors. So we're looking carefully at it. Uh, we do think that uh, that obviously it's going to have impact on on some sectors of the economy and we'll we'll care analyze that. We intend on staying competitive, which right. is the way we've taken an approach to uh, corporate tax rates over the last, you know, really the last generation. So, so does that mean that you would be willing or at least looking at changing certain corporation taxes for certain industries? Am I, think, I understanding that I, correctly? I, th I think what we have to say is that we, we want to make sure that we're competitive. We do think that we are competitive. Uh, we think that this, uh, this change obviously has uh, some impacts that we need to analyze more closely to better understand, and that's what we're doing. Um, Minister, you were talking about the growth of Canada, and it is amongst the highest, if not one of the highest, I think, G7. But looking forward, it could actually slow to a little bit of below average of the G7 groups. Do you have any incentives or policies to actually, you know, put stronger growth together for the future? What we've done since we've come into office is we've been very focused in investing in Canadians. So we, we took a very clear approach to lower taxes for middle class Canadians. We raised them on the top 1%. We means tested our child benefits so that 9 out of 10 families got significantly more. So what that did is it actually provided some, some real impetus not only for our economy but also helped those families to be more confident. So that's our continuing approach. We're going to be looking on a continual basis how we can make sure that women are successful in our economy so that we can have you know better outcomes for women as well as better outcomes for our economy. So we have much more to do. The growth rate we've seen over the last year has been, as you say, 
the number one in the G7. We're now starting from that very strong base to look at what we can do in, in 2018, and we're optimistic. Have you seen an impact on higher interest rates on your economy yet? We, we have. Uh, the Bank of Canada last year had two uh, increases, two 25 basis points, point interest rate increases mm -hmm. in Canada. And we've had one 25 basis point interest rate increase this year. And that's obviously a reflection of the fact that our economy is doing well. The low unemployment, uh, of course, is, is a positive, and we'd like to see wage growth coming from that. We're starting to see those sort of positive indicators, which is reflected in the Bank of Canada's decision. But how's the consumer? The consumer is okay? or mortgages? I know at some point you were looking at, for example, transferring some of the mortgage default risk onto banks. Is this still a proposal that you're looking at? We've done a number of things around the mortgage space. We uh -huh. do see that the level of uh, debt versus disposable income is something we need to watch carefully. Uh, we made a number of sort of macro prudential changes in the mortgage space by changing the requirements for down payments, for changing, changing the sort of stress testing on getting mortgages that we think is going to have an impact on, on ensuring that people don't take on mortgages that are outside of their reach. So we're doing that in a way that we think is measured, that will allow that risk to, to diminish. Mm -hmm. But of course, in Canada, like in many countries, the, the, the fact that um, employment is strong is a very positive thing for the housing sector. So with the lowest unemployment rates we've seen in over 40 years, mm -hmm. of course, Canadians are feeling better about facing up to that uh, mortgage debt. Um, Minister, talk to me about Bitcoin. Now, we've talked about Bitcoin to every single participant and every person that's come on the set. You said in the past, and actually you won't further regulate to what you've already done. And there's a little bit of confusion about what this means, whether it's you know ta being taxed, for example, on capital income or some of the transaction. Or are you going to have a, a Bitcoin or crypto regulation overhaul? We don't have any specific Bitcoin or cryptocurrency overhaul. Of course, like with any other uh, investment in Canada, you get a capital gains tax on, on investment gains. So, so this is not uh, unique in any way. Uh, the main way that we're looking at Bitcoin, of course, is, is making sure that we understand what's going on underneath that market mm -hmm. to make sure that we're not introducing any risks into our economy, whether they be risks like money laundering or terrorist financing. So we're very focused on it from that angle. And of course, uh, keep a close watch. But as I told you when, before we were so on So maybe camera, more regulation. Are you telling me maybe more regulation the, 2018? The, uh, what I can't do is tell you something that I don't know. So we've not come to any <laughs> conclusions in that regard. Uh, but we will continue to watch carefully.